Hello, everyone. Welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Albert, host of the show, channel, I mean. So anyhow, the, this video is for the banking services sector. Next three stocks that I have for today is ticker symbol NWFL. Next one is Origin Bank Corp, which is OBK. And ticker symbol Fulton Financial, F-U-L-T. We're going to start from the bottom, work our way up. Uh, today is going to be the last video for today. I think I've made three videos already. Again, there's going to be uh, another three videos on the banking services sector since I'm trying to catch up. And again, uh, I don't only owe this to myself. I owe it to you guys. Um, my view count has been lower. Um, I've been busy within the fa past few weeks with work, with family, everything else that's going on. Um, I'm a very busy guy. Um, aside from, you know, doing the financial uh, videos as well. On top of that, uh, even though um, I know my channel sucks, but again, um, I like to do it as a hobby to look at history and keep data and keep myself organized when it comes to the different sectors and how they're doing so anyhow moving on from that let's just begin through the full analysis like i always do so today is june 15th sorry yeah it is 15th sorry june 15th 2023 on the east coast it is 8 30 p.m. Uh, I think I'll release this video in like an hour or so. Um, I'm not going to edit it, but again, I have to do my shorter video after this and then um, look after my little one for a little bit. So uh, stock price is at 29.28. Markets are closed after hours. So market cap is at 237 million. Uh, we're going to look at this first page like we always do. So Earnings are at 3.41. Dividend yield. Dividend is at 1.16. Uh, fairly low. PE. Uh, not much volume. Uh, very inactive stock. 52 week high and low is only a $12 difference. Uh, that's not much. You could actually have a $12 difference within a month, not for the year. Uh, that would have looked better for the month, but not for the year. But anyhow, uh, we see a big move going into the technicals now. Look at this really big move here. That's a very strong move. Um, kind of insane. Uh, I'd actually expect something like this from the AI stocks, not from the banking services sector. But again, people want to pile in money like crazy. I guess people are so anxious uh, to jump right in. I don't know if retail investors are actually participating in this momentum frenzy or even investing at all. Um, I'm certainly cautious about it. Um, I'm not fully aggressive um when things start going up in price i i've said it again it makes no sense to buy something that's getting more expensive when you should be buying it for cheaper um things aren't just making sense in the market uh the like i said before the fed is doing the right thing raising interest rates to try to continue to keep Raising interest rates and Wall Street is just dismissing it. Um, you could only feed the beast so much until they break off the chains and run out of the run out of the door into the real world. So the Fed has been feeding, you know, this monster under the steel door, and um, Wall Street has been just crazy. Um, I think people are overly optimistic in general wall street uh capital firms everybody's like 
aside from greed, just very, very overly optimistic. Um, AI, I believe it can be uh, a good thing to happen. But again, um, we're looking at this without uh, looking into a rear view mirror. We're not looking at consequences. We're not looking at um, any kind of manipulation strategies if this thing were to get into the wrong hands. Uh, we still have to do with hacking. Hacking is at an all-time high. People are just discarding like the negative side of this. And then, again, this is just this bubble people want to jump into and say everything was all right when everything is not all right. Um, so there's... It's a good and bad, so I feel kind of neutral about it. I'm not jumping into the AI frenzy. And if I am, or if I do consider it, it's got to be big companies with huge market caps. That's a given. Like I said before, Google, NVIDIA, uh, you have Broadcom, Microsoft. Um, there's just quite a few big companies out there. So anyhow, moving on from that, going into the banking sector, uh, Considering the AI, um, I don't know if that uptrend played a part in it, but that's a huge move. Insane. So anyhow, it is, it's beaten its 52-week uh, low, and it's trying to pretty much break new highs, which would be insane. Um, that's an insane move to jump right back like that. The five-year mark, let's look at that, uh, basically a little bit better than its flat area, which would be, uh, I'd say a little bit above the 200, I'd say like around there. So it's above $25, $26, so it is above its 200 EMA average. And I don't know, this might be a short-term play uh, given the momentum, but again, um, just depends how long to hold. So moving on for the quant rating, we have the highest indicator, which would be momentum, which I can see why, cause I showed you that big leg up. So, uh, definitely this might have some potential for a, uh, day trading tactic but the thing is it doesn't have enough volume um i would have to see that during market open if it can reach higher than that but again that's just very very tricky to land the high volume moving on to the fundamentals uh i'm gonna skip the key indicators here and key measures uh, which i usually go over i'll just skim right through them the debt is at close to 92% from 2022. And then if you see here, scrolling down, the net income has actually increased. Revenue has increased. I have nothing for operating income, which is fine. I don't use operating income too much anyway. So balance sheet is terrible, like always. Typical banking stock. Now we just want to see the cash flow for last year and compare that so we have 30 million then 207 say around 210 245 so that will be 32 oh they definitely have negative cash flow definitely 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 um not a good stock i'd get rid of this stock if you have it on your list uh horrible cash flow obviously the balance sheet needs work and again they're not even a small cap company if they're a small cap company they'd have a chance but again they're not so we're gonna move on to the next one and call that one a fail for nwfl never heard of this bank close to a billion dollar market cap Volume is higher than most banking stocks. Uh, fairly active, I can say. So earnings are okay. So, so far, it seems like a decent stock. 
52 week high and low. Uh, that's a nice range. Better than the $10 average for banking stocks that I've seen. So definitely, uh, so far from the first, first page that I'm seeing, it has potential. Uh, it's gone down in 2023 uh, with a recent uptrend starting up in around uh, early June, which was a few weeks ago. So we'll see if they continue this pattern. If they do, it won't be a big move. Uh, 200 EMA is at, what, $34.25? Close to that? Well, the answer is right here. But again, um, by the time it reaches that point, it'll be a different number. So anyhow, technicals lately look flat. I mean, it, yeah, it's gone up, but um, right here, it just looks flat there so far. So really, you just need further confirmation for a breakout to really see if there is momentum. Hmm. Moving on to the analysis for the quant ratings. Quant ratings, um, if it were me, I would definitely say this has momentum. Uh, I'd give it maybe like a four. Uh, but the highest rating that they gave it was value, which is 6.4, which I, I do understand. But again, uh, I disagree with the overall rating. Moving on to the fundamentals, we have here some earning estimates and actual estimates. Q1, they missed it. And for Q2, they lowered the guidance and we'll see if they beat it. If they do, congratulations. If they don't, then oh well. Uh, but it looks like the last three have been going towards the downtrend. Moving on to the indicators using a time frame for annually I want to compare their numbers so dropped in 2022 going comparing from last year the roe that's a five percent loss it's not a big loss but something then we have 2021 going to 2022 their margins are insane they went from almost 40 percent down to about 25 uh that's a big that's a big decline that's a really big gap going into that uh debt is at 90 percent. i'm not surprised so we're gonna look at some cash flow here let's see what's going on with that oh sorry so income statement uh Income has been going down from 2021 versus 2022, as we can see here. Uh, total revenue, we have it going up, which is nice, but uh, we really want to see the cash flow. So we have 145 million, negative 36, negative 455. Uh, too much negative cash flow. It did have potential as a day trading stock but again uh with the cash flow issue it's definitely a no-go and this company has some work to do so i'm gonna say no to this one no to the watch list or if you have it get it off your watch list and we're gonna just go right into the last one which is f-u-l-t fulton financial uh, two billion dollar market cap, very respectable. Something that Wall Street will definitely uh, analyze or take a look at, just because it's in the billions. Um, that's already like a standard, just so you guys know. So the sticker price is at thirteen dollars and ten cents. So we have here a loss and a downtrend up until around May. Then it's gone up. Up around this time so evening out this is another stock that needs further confirmation to see if it can break out of this pattern and if it does um you might see continued momentum uh, i'm not buying into it you're going to see a lot of stocks like this especially in the ai and technology sector 
uh, I think obviously uh, it's it's easy to live in the fast lane when everything's going up and you feel like you know you're missing out but um, you know to be a great investor patience 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 it, it requires um, a lot of skill as well and determination to do that I don't think um, there are enough people like me again I'm just holding cash on the sidelines again feel free to do whatever you want to each their own within their strategies but I have uh, more than one strategy to gain access to win so again uh, I'm not typically being greedy during this time I think the time for me was was being greedy was when the banking sector was failing because I saw that coming and again I said for commercial real estate uh, definitely definitely uh, the time to accelerate so again to each their own everybody has their own way of doing things and that has to be respected because uh, that's how um, winners and losers determine um, who stays in the market or not so anyhow moving on to the analysis here so quant rating we have the highest it's always value I'm always seeing value for, for banks again which makes sense but uh, that shouldn't be the main factor so anyhow I'm gonna look at that again uh, 1.6 earnings uh, it's not so good 52 week high and low difference of what not even 10 bucks uh, pretty awful now we want to look at the fundamentals so lowering their guidance tremendously from Q4 Q1 and then Q2 for 2023 and then we have here some indicators i'm just going to scroll to the bottom look at some cash flow hopefully it's positive if it's positive then i'll look over the rest if not then oh well so these guys are definitely in the hole so no so we're looking at at least a negative a billion negative 1 billion in cash flow and again they will have to look at their net income and get money out of that even if they do use that still not enough to cover uh positive income or positive cash flow so with that said again uh this company has high volume but again it's just not worth it so there you have it. None of these companies are pretty good. This one seems uh, pretty active, but again, it's just not a good company um, to jump into anyways. So that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, the weekend is coming up. So again, I'm going to be off next week. Stay tuned for like uh, I'm going to have three videos Monday, so we're looking at at least 15 more videos for next week. I can't wait to finish this sector. I'm so anxious to do it. And then after that, I'm going to jump into uh, the long-term portfolio that is pretty much due. And then after that, I'll jump into the, what else I have planned? Um, just moving forward, just letting you guys know. Uh, what else do I have planned? Let me think for a second. The commercial uh, real estate sector. Once I'm done with the banking sector. So those are the plans. And I'm going to stick to them. Uh, we'll see what happens with the market. Keep you guys updated. Again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, any questions, comments, requests are very much welcome. And I'll see you guys in the next one.